The Thunderbolts are a Marvel team that you're probably going to be hearing a lot more of in the coming years, but if you don't have a clue who they are, then this is a video for you. Woof woof! Hey guys, it's me Marcus aka The Mad Dog and we're back with another video. In 1996, Marvel Comics printed Onslaught, which is an event that I don't have the time, patience or energy to comprehend in this video. However, because of that event, the Avengers were declared dead after the battle and the Earth was left without its mightiest heroes. In actual fact, a lot was going on behind the scenes which meant that Marvel just needed them out of the picture. Stepping into their place was a new team known as the Thunderbolts who were created by Kurt Busiek and Mark Bagley. They first appeared in January of 1997 in issue 449 of The Incredible Hulk. To the world they were the superheroes that the Earth desperately needed but in a twist that very few saw coming and this is massive spoilers if you don't want a comic from 25 years ago being ruined. The Thunderbolts were actually the masters of evil in disguise being led by Baron Zemo. Each member had a new alias and costume and the first roster of the Thunderbolts comprised of Citizen V, a character that now sounds like it should be from the boys. Although a few heroes had taken on the title during the 40s and the 50s, the Thunderbolts were being led by Baron Helmet Zemo taking on the alias. As he discovered a previous Citizen V was one of the heroes that his father had killed. Bit grim. He had originally intended to create a new roster of the Masters of Evil, but after the presumed death of his greatest enemy, Captain America, his sense of purpose was gone. But in the wake of the Avengers, he realised that there was an opportunity for the Masters of Evil to become more powerful and respected than ever before, if they went under the guise of heroes that were trying to protect the Earth. And the original team succeeded far quicker than expected, having been swiftly accepted as New York's primary heroes, meaning that they were granted access to weaponry and information that was off limits during the villain days. But Zemo quickly hatched a plan to try and take over the Earth, after the team's popularity was at an all-time high as he'd been seen fighting alongside heroes such as Spider-Man. But Zemo's plotting was his own undoing, as the Thunderbolts that he'd assembled turned against him to foil his plan. Ostracised from his own team and barely surviving the fallout, he retreated to South Africa and hatched a revenge plan, but kinda like my YouTube career, it was unsuccessful. Another Citizen V confronted Zemo, claiming to be the true successor to the title, but he somehow managed to escape the team that he formed and went into hiding. But because of the fact that Helmet's gone between being a hero and a villain so many times that you think it should automatically qualify him to be a member of the X-Men, he has returned over the years to be a part of and sometimes lead the Thunderbolts again. He doesn't have much in the way of powers except for delayed aging thanks to Compound X, but because of that he has a genius level of intellect, is an expert in hand-to-hand -hand combat and is the master of deception, which is especially true since since nobody saw the twist with the Thunderbolts coming. The next member we're going to talk about is Eric Joston, who's had a few aliases since his debut in 1965. Power Man, Goliath, the Smuggler, but he joined the Thunderbolts as Atlas. He's a Milwaukee-born former member of the US Army who was originally hired by Zemo to smuggle stolen tech into one of his secret bases. He remained a low-level enemy of the Avengers for many years, but his most beneficial development was when he was subjected to pin particles by Dr. Malice as part of a deal. Why do I never get deals like that? This, combined with his enhanced strength, meant that he could also expand his size. And prior to joining the Thunderbolts, he was captured by Cosmos aliens and it was actually Zemo that saved him. Now in his debt, he wanted Eric to join the new roster of the Masters of Evil that he was forming. Under his new identity of Atlas, he realised the benefit of fighting for good, and even started to form a relationship with a member of the mayoral team. And as we all famously know, people associated with those in power don't get involved with supervillains. Which is why she broke it off with Eric when Zemo's plan was revealed. Yet this invigorated Justin and the other members of the Thunderbolts to turn against the leader in the thing that I spoke about previously when I was speaking about Zemo, so I won't bore you with it again. There have been times when Atlas has had his mind controlled, which has caused him to go back to his villainous ways. But for the most part, he stayed on the good track since joining the Thunderbolts and even joined the Defenders at one point. He did also join Hydra as well, but I wanted this to sound like it was going to end on a positive note. Next up is Mac, which is an abbreviation for Mobile Armored Cyber. A harness. And I don't know about you, but it's hard for me to think that you're cool if you admit that you're wearing a harness. Yet Abner Jenkins somehow managed to do it when he joined the Thunderbolts. Before that, he was the mechanic turned villain known as the Beetle. Yep, remember that annoying boss in Ultimate Spider Man on PS2? It's him. And yes, I know it's not explicitly said to be the same person in the suit, but just let me vent, that thing's annoyed me since I was 11. He was previously an aircraft maintenance technician before creating the Beetle Armor and attempted to become a hired mercenary. But when that didn't work out, he was recruited by the Masters of Evil, which which to me is like failing at being a shop assistant so they promote you to being CEO. But with the help of the fixer, he created a new armor and became Mach 1. But again, after spending a bit of time with the Thunderbolts, he realized that he enjoyed being a hero and he even went back to prison to serve his time for a murder that he'd committed. Jenkins doesn't have any superpowers, but his suit can fly, it has a lot of weapons in it, and it's quite durable as far as superhero armors go. But in saying that, it has gone through quite a few versions over the years, so don't be surprised if you see a Mach 1, a Mach 2, a Mach 5, or even a Mach 10. And little 
known fact, Gillette actually named their razor after him. Please don't fact check that. And if you are following the history of this team, it is much easier now that we've got the omnibuses being released and we've also got an upcoming volume three, which you can already order with the discount codes that we've got with the channel sponsor, Organic Price Books. They've got great packaging, fast shipping and amazing customer services. And if you use code woof woof, you'll get $2 off your order. And if you're ordering three or more books and you want them to be delivered together, make sure you use code woof woof, ship it together for 5% off your entire order. Don't worry, you can just copy and paste them from the description down below and you can use these codes as many times as you like. Another one of the starting members is Meteorite and Carla Sofen might be a name that you'd remember if you've watched me Who Are The Dark Avengers video, so I'm not just going to repeat everything that I said there, although it would make this video easier. Having previously worked as a psychiatry, she was led to a life as supervillainry after she realised that she really quite enjoyed manipulating her patients. And she used these manipulative abilities to convince the previous Moonstone to reject the Moonstone so that she could become the new Moonstone. Yeah, I said it way too many times. Because the Moonstone was designed by the Kree, it gave her abilities such as superhuman strength, speed, stamina, durability, gravity manipulation, and light manipulation. But that last one was only to a limited degree, so it's hardly worth bragging about. Having previously been recruited to the Masters of Evil, she was an easy shoe in for the Thunderbolts, and that's where she adopted the persona of Meteorite. Again, she was another member that saw the benefit of being a hero, and she even had a fling with Hawkeye, and she tried to return to a normal civilian life. And doubly again, it didn't last long, and she's had a storied history since she joined the Thunderbolts. At one point, she obtained a second Moonstone, which gave her even more power, and she even posed as Captain Marvel during the Dark Avengers, which, again, go watch that video. Also starting the team was Songbird, Melissa Joan Gold, a name that I confused with that lady who played Sabrina the Teenage Witch. But before returning the Thunderbolts, she was known as the Screaming Mimi, a stage name she took on when she joined the wrestling group The Grapplers. Original name by the way, that's like a boxing group being called The Punchers. She was a runaway child turned thief who quickly found herself in jail when she tried doing work for Roxanne. But this was also where she unleashed the mighty power of her voice, which is her most famous ability and is so strong that you can create sonic objects. She can also fly and has super human strength and speed, stamina and durability. Damn, they really love copying and pasting these powers. Just before joining the Thunderbolts, she was recruited by Zemo for the Masters of Evil and formed a relationship with Angar the Screamer, with the duo doing robberies together. Oh, that's sweet. And when he died during a botched robbery and spoilers for anybody that was doing a complete read through of Angar the Screamer, Melissa screamed so loud that she burnt out her vocal cords. And because that was the one power that separated her from the rest of the team, she was implemented with high-tech augmentations by the Fix-It, which just further enhanced her abilities, which meant that this was the ideal time for her to become Songbird and debut with the newly formed Thunderbolts. Sounds like I'm burning out my own vocal cords in this video. Here she learned the benefit of becoming a hero and even formed a relationship with Mac one and pretty much any of the Macs that were able underneath the suit. She has also remained a member of the Thunderbolts for many years and even worked alongside Luke Cage when he took over the team. And the last main member is Techno and this is where the real sci-fi goofiness comes into play. You may have heard me mention the Fixer a few times already in this video, but his real name is Norbert Ebersol. Even though I would have gone for Fixie McGee, he was a technical and mechanical whiz from a very early age and then he turned to a life of crime to stimulate his intellect, which is probably one of the best excuses I've heard, and bounced between a variety of different supervillain groups over the years, including Hydra, the Masters of evil, the new enforcers, and eventually the Thunderbolts. And that's pretty good going for a guy with no powers and just a tech pack to rely on, which is a device that he created which can restructure itself into any kind of weapon or device that he wants. Kind of like the evil machine in Terminator 3. He was quick to join Zemo's band of fraudulent heroes and was one of the only original members that didn't try to overthrow its founder. Mostly because he died before that could happen and had his consciousness downloaded into his tech pack which pretty much just made him a robot. He's another member that's rejoined the team over the years but he does seem to prefer being a villain more than a hero, probably pays better. So those were the six founding members of the Thunderbolts, the ones that had been there from issue one. But they aren't the only ones, and honestly, looking at this list of current and former members, I was half expecting to see my own name turn up. Like, there's just that many people on it. So I can't go through them all today because I've got work soon. Like, I've got to find a way to pay the bills. But here were some of the more notable members who joined during the first volume of this series. Jolt, whose real name is Helen Takahama, but she also goes by Hayley Shimasato. She was a teenager that joined the Thunderbolts a few issues in after she she was trying to connect with the Fantastic Four, but just like the Avengers, they were also presumed dead. And the reason she was trying to look for them is because she'd been kidnapped by Armin Zola and experimented on, and she wanted to understand what was going to happen. She has pretty much the same powers that I've said for the majority of the other characters, but she can also create hyperkinetic punches. And the main difference between her and the other members that were already there is that she wasn't a supervillain to begin with. Yet when the Thunderbolts did turn against Zemo, Jolt was the one that tried to encourage the rest of her teammates to try and fight for good. Hawkeye, yep, I always said it, the 
point where the bow and arrow was going to be evil. Clint Barton was first introduced to the team when he rescued the Thunderbolts when he was disguised as Dread Knight. And that's because after Zemo's initial tenure, Moonstone took over leadership duties of the team and she made some really poor decisions which led to them getting captured. Once escaped though, the team discussed who should be leader, which is when Hawkeye revealed his true identity and he was appointed leader after he could guarantee that he could get the other remaining members pardoned for some of the previous crimes. Pretty good deal. And he was a really good mentor for this group because he helped the heroes learn how they could abandon the villainous pasts and also just helped solidify the team's reputation. Charcoal, and okay, you're gonna wanna strap him for this one because this guy's history is just so much of a mess that I could probably do my own video on it. Back in the 90s, Wizard Magazine ran a creative villain competition with the main prize being that whatever you create would eventually end up in one of Marvel's comics. Wallace and Crojo Frost were the winners and they created Charcoal who debuted in the 19th issue of the Thunderbolts. He first fought the team but then like any great story arc, he eventually went on to work alongside them. I know, who could have predicted that? He can manipulate fire and form carbon objects such as charcoal and diamonds and admittedly saying it out loud I'd probably go with the latter but for some reason he went with charcoal. However, because all of the prizes that were originally promised in that wizard competition were allegedly not awarded, the legal ownership of the character was put into dispute and because of that they just killed off the character because they thought it'd be the easiest way to solve the problem. Yeah, I told you this was a mess. Ogu, which is a really unusual pick for your supervillain name but he's another genius without superpowers. Brian Dunlap was originally a member of Factor 3. Odd choice naming your supervillain group after Suntan Lotion. He got his villain name because of his stout appearance and because he mostly hid away in the shadows, which is where he witnessed the Masters of Evil imprisoning Moonstone. He hid a key for her to find so that she could escape, and when the Thunderbolts eventually took over the base, Ogre just kind of stayed there. He much preferred the Thunderbolts over the previous owners, which is no surprise because they literally had evil in their name, and created tech that the team could use while still remaining hidden in the shadows. And he actually went undiscovered by anybody for a massive amount of time. Amazon and she debuted late in the team at issue 67 of the original run, and although she joined the Thunderbolts as Amazon, she was previously the supervillain known as Mankiller. Her abilities are pretty much the same as Atlas, and if they can't be bothered to change that, I can't be bothered to act like the difference. And she had previously battled the Thunderbolts on a few occasions before changing her identity and joining the team. Her tenure was short-lived and she left the team because she felt like she didn't have what it took to become a Thunderbolt, which it seems like the only requirement is that you were previously a villain, so she ticked that box. And she left the team to resume being a criminal. So in all honesty, it sounds like she was correct and she didn't have what it takes. You've also got Black Heath, and Samuel Smith went under the name Plant Man for many years before joining the Thunderbolts. And Smith has the power of plant manipulation, which happened when lightning struck his plant ray, which meant that part of his physiology was now that of a plant. He sort of reminds me of Swamp Thing, but doesn't really have as much depth, and he was a minor inconvenience for a lot of the Marvel teams over the years. But let's be honest, if you just go into a sort of cold climate, he's done for. And after being in prison next to Hawkeye and breaking out alongside him, that's when he decided to join the Thunderbolts, and he also learned a lot more about what his condition really is. And I said he's a bit like Swamp Thing, but he's actually more a cross between him and sort of Poison Ivy. Because he's got one main goal in life, and that's to protect the verdant green from all humans. And I can't really blame him. We're the worst. And because that was his main goal, he hoped that that would be the same for the Thunderbolts, and that's why he stayed with them for many years. Cyclone, another one that started off as a villain to the Thunderbolts, but later joined up. But Pierre Fressen isn't the first Cyclone. And the original designs for the costume were seen by the Magia Crime Organization, who then gave the Cyclone suit to Pierre. And having joined up with the Masters of Evil, he was tasked with spying on the Thunderbolts to see if he had truly turned the ways for good. But this led to his defeat and later imprisonment. Shortly after this, he was convinced by Hawkeye, who at this point I really hope is getting some kind of referral commission, to join the Thunderbolts, and Pierre agreed, but he refused to abandon his costume or his identity. You've also got Harrier, whose real name is Donald Clendenon, who is a former soldier of fortune, who originally went under the supervillain alias of Cardinal, and also led a mercenary group known as Air Force. Later he joined up with the Masters of Evil, and got involved in this plot to try and kill Hawkeye whilst he was at Seagate Prison. But persuasive as always, Clint somehow found a way to convince Donald to join up with the Thunderbolts. Which is especially impressive because Donald blamed Clint for the death of his daughter. I don't know, maybe he just didn't like her much in the first place. He took on the identity of Harrier and decided to fight against the Masters of Evil. And having turned a new leaf and deciding that he didn't want to be a villain forever, he decided to go back to prison for crimes that he'd previously committed. Last one that we're going to talk about is Skeen. Skeen? Skin? I don't know. But Sybil Dorvac, and I think I'm pronouncing her name correctly, in that case I'd probably be 0 for 2 if I'm not, is a mutant who previously went by the name of the Gypsy Moth, and she has the power of psychokinesis, meaning that she can control objects with her mind. With it being this late on in the video, you can probably already guess how she ended up joining the Thunderbolts, because Hawkeye convinced her to be a member of the team. Honestly, it looks like Hawkeye did more for the Thunderbolts than Zemo ever did. She was a valuable member and useful in battle, but she was a little bit too flirty with Songbird, which caused her to be pushed out of the team when the Thunderbolts underwent a restructuring. And that's pretty much it for the first iteration of the Thunderbolts, up until the new Thunderbolts debuted in 2004. There were a few other characters 
that appeared here and there, but over the years this team has expanded exponentially, and even included big names like the Green Goblin, Luke Cage, Ant-Man and Bucky, but they've solidified themselves as one of the key groups within the Marvel Universe regardless of who the members are, and hopefully will continue to do so over the years. But that's the video, hopefully you've enjoyed it, hopefully you've learned something from it, let me know what you think about this type of video in the comment section below, but until next time just make sure that you stay safe, and stay mad all you dogs, we're proof, see you at the next video.